greetings everybody. I thought that I would make another video. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. You notice Big Red isn't here. No, instead it's my black 750 Virago. And I was riding it on the highway the other day and I noticed that I was getting uh, carburetor backfires during deceleration. So while I was driving it was just fine. But once I let go of the throttle and it started to wind down, I started to get some uh, pops coming out of what I believe is the left carburetor, uh, but I couldn't really tell exactly. I had my helmet on and those things. So um, usually what that means is it usually means that the air fuel mixture is a little bit hinky. It might be running too lean, um, sometimes too rich. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to set the airflow mixture, air fuel mixture in the carburetors. Now, sometimes they call this the pilot setting. Other people call it air fuel mix. Other people call it whatever they're going to call it. I call it air fuel mix. That's what uh, my buddy Jeff always called it uh, when he kind of taught me this. So uh, that's what I'm going to call it. But like I said, you may call it something different, pilot, pilot mix, something like that. Um, so, of course, we know that there are two carburetors um, on this Virago because it's twin cylinder. So we have to figure out how it is that we're going to uh, set the mixture for each carb. And the tools needed are pretty basic. Let me show you what the tools are. So, some tools that you may need or will need. You need a 3 h drive ratchet. You'll need a 13 16 or a 21 millimeter socket deep well. Uh, this is a spark plug socket uh, because yes, we will be taking out the spark plug and you're probably wondering, why are you taking out the spark plug when you're messing with the carburetor? We'll get to that, okay? You'll also need a little stubby screwdriver, but guess what? Most of these stubby screwdrivers the head's too big to fit in the orifice where the uh, where the mixture screw is. So instead, if you have one that has a thin head, great. I usually just take a bit. So here's just a regular flat head bit. And then I take one of these little adapter dealies. You guys probably all have these in your toolkit. You know, they go to a, um, like to a drill or to a, one of those screwdriver type dealies of, and then a quarter inch wrench. Why the quarter inch wrench? So that you can put it in there and you can actually twist with it, okay? So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do here, um, we're going to get the bike up to operating temperature, okay? So I'm just gonna start it and I'm gonna let it idle and I'm gonna get it to where the engine feels warm. Now, of course, I don't want it to feel hot because my hands are gonna be in there and I don't wanna burn myself, okay? So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna get a little bit more in depth with it. So also one thing I wanted to say too is when you're doing these carburetors, um, it's all about finding that Goldilocks zone, okay? And what do I mean by that? Well, you're gonna notice when you start twisting that screw, the idle is gonna go from going lower to higher. Most people think, oh, when it's running higher, it that must be the spot because it sounds better. And that's not really the case, or at least that hasn't been my experience with the case. Usually what it is, you start out low, you move it up to high, move it back down to the low, and then just ever so slightly turn it until it just starts elevating the RPM and then a hair backwards. So you want that spot where as you're moving that screw a little bit, nothing's happening. It's not going any lower. It's not going any higher. It's just right there in that middle part. That's at least how I was taught. So once again, a disclaimer, this is for entertainment purposes only, or if you trust me, then go with it. Uh, I'm not responsible if you mess up your bike. You shouldn't mess up your bike unless you totally get the screw out of whack and just start spinning the crap out of it, okay? Um, it's all about trying to find a little bit of that happy medium. On some carburetors, not these, but on some carburetors at the factory, they actually put a plug on top of these uh, to where they're not serviceable. Uh, you actually have to drill them out and then to be able to get to the screw, drill the cap off. Sometimes it's a rubber cap that you can pop off. But just so you know, uh, depending on your make and model, um, you may have yours in a different place. So 
Uh, let me go ahead and start this up really quick and I'm gonna get it warmed up and then I will pop the camera back on. Okay, so I just had the bike running for a few minutes. Um, so it's warmed, it's warm to the touch. It's not hot, but it's warmed up. It can start right off a choke, which I usually determine, well, without choke. So I determine that, you know, it's pretty warmed up, good to go. So let's get into a little bit of this, okay? I'm going to move the camera around a little bit so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pop off the spark plug boot, hopefully here. There we go. Spark plug boots popped off. We're gonna take our 13 16 or 21 millimeter ratchet. We're gonna go ahead and take off the spark plug. One thing that I do want to mention when you're doing this too, see this right here? This is your idle, okay? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're warming up your bike, before you take off your spark plug, that your bike's idling at about a thousand RPM. I actually boost mine up a little bit to about 1300, um, just because I guess I'm a, uh, a little bit older and a little bit harder of hearing and I like to hear the higher RPMs, that frequency I can hear a little bit better. So, but at any rate, this thing should just about be out. Okay, so now the spark plug is out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put spark plug back in the boot. Just like that. Then what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to see if we can put it in a way that it's gonna, a lot of times you can put it right in this filler. If you pull this out a little bit, see how that fit right in there? And we're basically just doing that to where it's not gonna be flopping around, shocking us and all that. Okay, so I will show you where the air fuel jet is now. So I want you to get you a nice picture of where the air fuel mixture screw is. And that is right up in here. You see that little orifice right there? Little stem sticking out inside that stem. There is a flathead screw. And that flathead screw is gonna be for your air fuel mixture, okay? So just to let you know, it's right there. It's not here. This is your idle, okay? And of course it's not there either. It's right up in there. Now, like I said, on some models, they'll actually have that plugged off. You may have to pop off a cap, or you may have to even drill out a little bit of casting because a lot of times they don't want you to mess with this because of emissions and stuff like that, depending on what state you're in. So, have the spark plug sitting here. We have this sitting here, okay? What's the next step? Well, the next step is going to be to start it. And yes, it will run on one cylinder. It'll run good enough for us to do what we need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna reset the camera and then we'll get to that step. Okay, so now we start it. Take our screwdriver.
I would say about right there is it. Because you could tell when I was twisting it the one way, the RPM was coming up a little bit. When I was twisting it the other way, the RPM was coming down a little bit, okay? It doesn't really take much. Sometimes it does. You saw that I had to twist the one way to get it to go up a little bit, and then this way to get it to go down a little bit. Um, and it's important because it's a flathead screw. You kind of really have to get it up there, feel it lock into place, and then I always hold it and pushing pressure up that way to be able to twist it. So this wasn't the carburetor that I thought was suspect. It's the one on the other side, but we'll do that one. Um, and we'll see what's going on there. So it's basically we just rinse and repeat So I'm gonna put this side back together and then I'll move you around to the other side of the bike and you can see Me do that side as well. Okay, so as I was saying earlier that I thought that this was a suspect carburetor Don't know if you can see that or not, but that uh, that plug is pretty fouled uh, Which probably means this is running a little bit rich Remember this is the carburetor. I thought was being suspect so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing that we did before. And we're gonna see if we can't clear this up a little bit because that is a whole lot of carbon on there. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and start this one up and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm going to say about right there is a probably a pretty good starting point. Uh, I was able to hear the RPMs go up a little bit, hear them to go down a little bit, and then moved it kind of in the middle uh, to where when I tweaked it this way or that way, I didn't hear the RPMs move. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this is the way that I was taught, so this is the way that I am going to do it. Um, but the only way to really tell if I'm successful is to take this for a drive and see if it backfires out of this carb yet. Uh, but just know that a little bit of trial and error, I might have to go through it a couple times. I might have to take it for a quick ride and then uh, tweak it a little bit more. Um, and then once you have it, you're pretty much good to go. Uh, but this is definitely will help solve that annoying deceleration pop that you might get out of your carbs at pop, pop, pop. Uh, just by messing with your air fuel screw or your pilot screw, whatever you want to call it. You know what time it is? Yep. If you like what you saw, if you like what you are reading in the comments of my other videos, please feel free to click that like, click that subscribe, click that notification bell so you can be notified of all of my future videos that are coming. Please, I noticed we're getting there, but still about 92% of all of my watchers are not subscribed. Please, it only takes a second. I'm not going to spam your inbox. I'm not going to do anything bad like that. I just need more subscribers to show me that I'm doing a good job, okay, and that you guys want me to continue to do these videos. I know there are many other motorcycle videos out there, but I try to do what I can to show people who have little to no experience, kind of like myself, that it can be done and that we don't have to pay $125 an hour for a motorcycle mechanic at your local motorcycle repair place to be able to fix these. We can sit out here on a nice Sunday afternoon and get it all taken care of. Remember guys, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below and I will try to answer them the best that I can. I will be getting back on Old Red pretty soon, but for right now, I wanted to take care of this because it was simply uh, starting to drive me nuts because I didn't like that deceleration pop. Uh, typically, deceleration pop will not permanently damage your motorcycle it's not like it's it's out of time or something like that and you're gonna have uh, issues like that it's usually just an air fuel mixture uh, issue and hopefully we took care of it um, and I will let you know and uh, if not then I will be pulling this bike back up and doing it a couple more times but I'll do that off camera because you guys already saw how to do it make sure that when you're all done you are putting your spark plug back in like you need to right and uh, not running it off of one cylinder because that uh, would not be good. Um, and yeah, everybody just have fun. Enjoy this weather. It feels like summer is finally here. We are getting uh, a lot of great summer weather here in my part of Indiana, which is great. 
and I want everybody to know that um, I will be posting some more videos now that the weather is nicer. Uh, and let me know, give me a recommendation if there's something that you're looking for. Uh, do you want me to do a little bit more on this black bike? Do you want me to do it on old red? Um, yeah, I need some input people. But until then, make sure that you're keeping both your tires on the road. Take care, everybody. Hi, everybody. I thought that I would just let you know that I took the bike out for a ride. No deceleration backfire. So it seems as if I got everything straightened out that I need to. And as you can see, hey, I got some merch here. So if you are interested in it, please look at the link in the description. It's very affordably priced. It helps you to be able to support my channel. And I think it's a pretty cool concept too, huh? Kind of looks like the Yamaha symbol, but with wrenches. So if you're interested, they're in different colors, different sizes, get some swag. Let me know if there's any other kind of swag that you would like, and I'm sure that I can uh, oblige and try to come up with something. So I just wanted to give you a follow-up. The motorcycle is good to go. The Virago is not popping out of the carburetor anymore, and that is great. And I also, like I said, forgot to tell you about my merch. So buy my merch. You will make me a happy motorcycle repair guy. Take care.